Okay, good to go. And now <clears throat> we're going to upgrade our host kernel. Okay, okay. So uh, we want to go where we put our kernel that we got from kernel.org. Okay, and the reason why I got a 2.6.22 uh, kernel is it's not that big of a jump. All right. Um, and that was like one of the first that had loopback support. So I wanted to kind of stay relevant to the time period of the uh, LFS, uh, you know, text on how to do this here. So, you know, I didn't want to get something like a 3.10 because that's just... <laughs> if anything failed, I would blame it on the kernel first and the version number first. Alright? So, um, I have to copy over my kernel. I'm going to copy my kernel over uh, via SSH into my computer, into my LFS machine. So I'm going to say that to root at 192.168.1.118 sources. Okay. At any day now. <clears throat> and after this goes through, we'll, uh, we'll extract it. And then we'll, um, we'll take a run through with it. It's only like one switch we actually have to add. Okay. So it shouldn't be too extraneous. And then we'll do that. Okay. So now let's go into our sources directory. See that it's there. So it's the other one that I extracted a long, 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 long time ago. And, um,. I should get rid of syslinux because it's not showing you how to get it or where to get it. But after this gets over with, which is going to take forever, I know it is. Oh my God, it's not! Thank God. Okay. Um, I'm going to remove syslinux here. That way I can just show you where to go get it. And not that it magically appeared on my computer. Alright, so we got the kernel here. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead first and we'll extract it. We'll say tar xvf uh, the kernel. Alright, that we just got. Let, we'll let that go through. We'll go back over here in the documentation. Okay, and we'll see what else we might need. Um, let's say vi or LFS live CD. Alright. So also two. I want you to look here. We have to have syslinux. This is gonna load our um it's gonna be a bootloader on our live CD. Okay? So I just deleted this one out of there because I want to show you where to go get it. Alright. And that's what we're gonna go do now. We're gonna go get this syslinux. Okay, that's on page. It's like in the top of the documentation. But this is a requirement that we need. Alright, so we'll go get it. And we'll say exit this. And we'll say links. Uh, syslinux. Syslinux. Dash 4.03. Of course, we're going to look through all the. Oh my god's first ring. Archives. I bookmarked this and I should just go to my bookmark, but here we go, this is okay. Okay. Um where am I? The URL's at the bottom. Alright, you can search through that. Um it's an index of pub utils uh boot syslinux, okay? But it's actually, I think it's at uh, kernel.org too. Okay? So, <clears throat> um, my URL's at the bottom. You can f just follow that if you want to and go there. So we need syslinux 403. Um, don't go get anything else because I tried that already and this, the documentation is just specific to this. <laughs> And there's actually, there's problems with 403, but I think they'll work for us. And, um, 
there's some name name problems and stuff like that, which we'll get into when we set up Syslinux. So, but it's it's just a little funky. Get get 403. Okay, so we got Syslinux 403. We can be a champion. Just let's copy that over to. Okay. Let's copy that to root at 102, 168, 118. And to our sources directory. And those are the only two things you actually need to go shopping for. Right? Everything else is uh, ready to go. We'll just read it from the documentation and as we go. Just set it up. Okay. Okay. Okay, kernels extracted. Let me see what else I got back here. Syslinux. Yep, okay, looks good. So, let's say, we'll cd into Linux first. And then we want to say, make MR proper. Proper. We'll clean out any of the old source trees that we have laying around. Which we shouldn't. But we'll clean them out anyway. And now we have to make make menu config menu config <clears throat> like I said there's only a few ticks that we have to actually go through with this there's not that much so alright here we are um, tip and a hint if you're using screen like me you have to go full screen with this because if not it won't let you uh, have a visual menu config you know what I'm saying <coughs> so if you are using screen that's what's going to happen uh, we have to go down first we got to go down to device drivers okay let me scroll down more I think it's back here. Uh, it's probably not back here. Uh, block devices. We're gonna go to the block devices. Okay. And then we're gonna say loopback support. Now, mind you, look how this is going down. You hit one um, one space bar, all right, and it pops up as a module. Be careful. I screwed myself up on that a couple times. <coughs> um, the loopback support and anything else for the target machine they cannot be modules if they are modules um, it, they're not going to be called up into memory as fast or I'll go, over, I'll go over the warning of why they can't be modules and it better says that in the documentation <coughs> but um, they cannot be modules okay okay so watch out don't let them be modules okay so little asterisk there is built in and that's all we need we don't really need anything else for the uh, host kernel so I'm gonna exit that I'm gonna exit that file systems no we don't need any of that all right so now now we're ready to save it yes I want to save it okay here we go okay so now you got that and we'll say um, make and make modules modules install okay and this is going to take a little bit to make maybe like a half hour for me <clears throat> now like I said uh, your loopback support cannot be modules but it didn't say you couldn't have any modules okay but your loopback cannot be a module okay so I want to make and I want to make modules install but my loopback is not going to be a module okay there will be some modules I forget what they are but your loopback is not one of them. Okay? Cool. So, that's what that does. And from there, <coughs> we'll, um, hmm. That's it. That's it for right now. That's for the host machine. We could take an overview of the target machine and, um, see what we need for that. But, uh, why not? Let's do it anyway. This is going to be for our target machine. The one that we're essentially going to ruin by making our uh, LFS CD. And 
uh, we can see here that it says uh, do the stuff from CH root environment. CH root environment, we're going to get that from the other uh, documentation. All right. But this is what it says for us to um, build the target machine. Now, <coughs> uh, the first step, blah, 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 you can you can read. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Look at the very bottom here. It says you know uh, make sure these settings are enabled as built-ins, not modules. Okay, and I enabled them as modules before, and I got I got uh, problems. I think did I get panic on it. I don't know if I got kernel panic, but I got problems. All right. So on the on the next kernel that we build for our target machine, we're gonna need RAM to support. Okay. Um, we need block devices, our RAM disk device support, all this stuff here. All right, we'll get all that done. Um, EXT2 file system support. See that? And we need ISO 9960 or 9 ISO <laughs> 9660 CD-ROM support. Okay. So these are the only configurations we have to do to the host or the target kernel. Okay. Right now we're enabling the host kernel because we have to mount a loop in the other one. This is optional to SquashFS. Um, I'm not going to be making the SquashFS file system support for the target because my system's slim enough. Hope yours is too. If it's not, you might want to branch off from my my uh, guide here and figure out how to do that, but I won't be going over any squash system support because uh, squash is good for if you have a <clears throat> if you need to compress more files to fit more on a CD but I don't because I kept mine slim enough right? so that's that and like I said, tools before, we're not going to go over that I, I don't have a tools directory, I don't need a tools directory and that's okay. All right, so in the next one, we'll uh, we'll move some stuff around uh, for our host kernel, and then we'll go ahead and we'll um, start kernel configing our target kernel. Okay, so that's it. Watch the output; it's going to be forever. And um, see how I kill screen recorder here. I have so many windows open. Excite. Okay, good to go. Alright, so I'll catch you guys in a brief short bit.